How's everybody doing? Matt McNeil coming to you from the garage, uh, my messy garage. Uh, as you can see, I am in the process of working on these Amy's. <laughs> this is actually my paint reference at the moment, and she's chilling behind the uh, uh, address <laughs> that I've got hanging from, uh, from, from the messy garage today. But uh, what I wanted to talk about was sort of uh, paint jobs, and because I'm in the process of painting, uh, I figured that I would talk really quickly about sort of the zones of the face in terms of color. Um, if you can see, I'm still working on this one. She's still drying. It's still like wet in some areas or whatever. But what I'm doing here, uh, and thus far, I've based this one out. I did a red pass. I did a yellow pass. I did a very, very light, faint blue pass in very specific areas. And um, then I will go back and do Amy's makeup uh, and maybe even like accent a little bit based on reference pictures of where she's kind of ruddy um, in, the, uh, ref in the reference. So, um, so what you're seeing here is like sort of the skin tone that is gonna be underneath her makeup. Now, this one, like I say, has had several layers of paint. I wish that I had actually just grabbed one before I went and did the red passes on all of these um, and it showed you what this looks like as a blank canvas because one of the really, I think, interesting things is I have not had to use a different color base for any of the displays that I've done thus far. And that would be Bright Boy Eddie Quist. That would be uh, uh, my Evil Ed from Fright Night. That would also be my Michael. Um, and now Amy. Uh, all are utilizing the exact same base color, which is, what did I do with it? I had it here, oh, here it is right here. Which is this color right here. Uh, it's a Sherwin-Williams color. I can't remember the name of it offhand, um, but it's really not that hard to sort of find a very neutral kind of taupey skin tone um, because everybody's, you know, bathroom is painted that color. Um, but, uh, uh, I've got the container around here. Maybe I'll, I'll try to post the name of the, the color or whatever, or at least a barcode or something. Um, so anyway, we'll come back to this gal. Uh, so this one's had a red pass, right? So I've done a, here, turn it around. Cause this is probably most indicative of what that base color is with a little bit of red on it. Right. And so I've just done a general base coat. I did a, a, a color wash on her. Um, and it was kind of a, a yellow and a, and a reddish wash because, again, I don't want to make Amy too dark. I don't want to go for dirty or sinister or anything like that. I think the teeth sort of tell that story. Uh, the rest of it is sort of um, kind of like this beauty makeup, right? So what I wanted to show you was this is what it looks like with a red pass. And I think some people m may just go, oh, yeah, good enough. Let's do some black and blah, 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 and we're done. N not for me. Um, I use this. Uh, it's pretty an invaluable chart uh, that I found on the internet somewhere, and it talks about the zones, the color zones of the face, which uh, I find super, super interesting. Um, and what it is, is like, obviously you're not gonna stripe your face like this, but this is the skew for the speckle colors that I do on a face. Now I'll do a yellow all over the face, but I'll concentrate on the forehead and go light everywhere else. I'll do a red pass everywhere, and literally everywhere, but just because you know you're going to want this sort of um, sort of shaping and modeling with that red, um, but concentrating on the center of the face. Now Amy's a little different because it was an actress wearing a makeup and blah blah blah, and so you know she's got a makeup job on top. But if you're going to follow the, the the idea of what skin tones do, you know you have to know that where skin bunches up, it's going to be redder. And the creases, it's going to be redder. But the reason it is, is not because that skin is red. The reason is because there's blood behind that skin. So the more you layer your colors, the more you put like a speckle pass, followed up with another speckle pass, followed up with another speckle pass, and then maybe even the makeup on top of it, you'll be burying those colors just slightly. And what that'll do is that'll give your paint job a little more depth. And so anyway, this is very rudimentary. You got yellow, red, and blue, right? And this is true, and particularly in men. A lot of people sort of skip this part, the blue, where we've got a beards and, and, and whatnot, facial hair. But even women uh, skew that color um, 
but just slightly. Again, you've got to use, this is, this is heavy handed and uh, you got to use a little bit of interpretation here, but this just shows you the zones. Now, this is an even better version because it shows us that there's a little bit of an orangey brown on the, the cheeks here. It shows us that the, the bridge of the nose, because that skin is pulled very tight across the bridge of your nose, uh, is mostly kind of a, a, a whiter color than the rest of the face. Center of the forehead as well. If you look here, there's a little bit of white there. And right here, this is really interesting. Around the corners of the mouth, there's almost like a yellowish green. And then it gets a little yellowish green on the either, either side of the, the beard area there. So, you know, for me, this has like been a really cool, oh, and also under the eyes, look at this. You know, everybody wants to paint purple under the eyes. Well, the reason you paint purple under the eyes is because red and blue make purple. And there's a lot of blue underneath people's eyes, you know, depending on the character and stuff like that. So, you know, you may feel inclined to paint that black on some characters. Okay, but the reality is if you're going for what does skin do, this is what it does. You're looking at it right here. So, um, really, really cool. Um, I find it really, really interesting uh, for that kind of information. And again, if you want to compare, um, here's just a red pass. Not bad. Not bad. We could just go ahead and go with that. But to me, there's a whole lot more going on here. If you look, it's a little yellowish green in here. There's a little more yellowish blue going on in here. And again, this is all gonna be covered up, but for my purposes, I want to put this makeup on top of something that represents a reality. And that way, when we're looking through that makeup, through that, through that, through that layer of paint, you're gonna pick up little bits of this. And that's what's gonna make this really, really great in my opinion. You really want to, um, for, my, for, for my purposes, capture some sort of reality in this. And so that's, that's the, my point of reference and how I start. Again, this has got several color washes. This has just got a single color wash. Hopefully you can see that in this light out here. Again, this is, this is good, this, this would be okay, but this is better. And I'm still not done because obviously I had to come in here and paint some black. I got to do the insides of the mouth, you know, the colors and whatnot. Um, and then, you know, obviously the eyes have a whole treatment in and of themselves. So, um, and maybe now that I'm looking at it, I'll come back and do a little more neck work on this one. This one's got a little extra network, neck work, which I think I'll probably knock down. Uh, that's another thing that you can do with these washes and, or, and whatever. If you find that you've gone too hard with a... Uh, a layer, you can always knock it back. You can always go back and just knock it back a little bit with, you know, if you've got too much red, then you can add a little blue. And if you've got too much, it's not, if, if it's too red and it should be skewed orange, then you add a little bit of yellow. And then worst case scenario, you can come back and you can either speckle your base coat uh, on top and then blot it. I wouldn't leave it speckly because I think it would be probably too, um, too noticeable. But if you blot it, what it'll do is it'll just knock it back just enough that it's kind of cool. So like this, this gal here, I went a little hard with the, 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 the red on her. So my job on this one, I'm going to knock it back a little bit and then we're going to do this treatment on it. And eventually all of these girls are going to look just like her. Uh, so there you go. So yeah, this is, this is number five. This is currently my copy because I'm using it as a paint master. Um, number two is hanging out in the corner over there, which is waiting to be finished. Three and four are... Uh, three is actually delivered today, or four was delivered today. Three is on its way out of the country, which is awesome. And uh, right here, you're looking at six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, which is great because once I get these girls onto these extra stands, that means I'm going to start pouring numbers 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So if you're in that group, awesome. I'm making a uh, really great headway. I'll be in touch about eyeballs and, you know, if I have any questions for how you want stuff done. But, um, yeah. So if you're wondering what's Matt been up to, you're looking at it. We're working on six through 10, one through five are pretty much done with the exception. These eyes aren't glued in. I don't have eyelashes on them. I still have a little bit of paint work around the eyes to do, but skin tones are great on this one. Same thing with this one. She's still sporting the evil Ed eyes. I got to pop some eyes in her and do some, uh, some eyelash work, uh, but everything else, she's already been glossed and whatever. She needs clothes. She needs clothes. 
But uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're rocking and rolling here, 6 through 10. Uh, and then we will be moving on 11 through 15 and then 16 through 20. So thanks everybody who's ordered one of these. I really, really appreciate it. We've hit the magic number of 20. But again, I may do up to 25 um, as I told everyone that has ordered one only because um, in hindsight, I think like with Evil Ed and Michael, people have gone, oh my God, I wish I'd bought one when you were selling them. And uh, I just want to maybe give people uh, an option in a few months of maybe picking up one of the last five Amy's because I'm only going to do 25. Um, but I won't do them immediately because I feel like it's time to get back to, to pushing some clay around, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, Alana and... And Ed have been staring at me, and, and it's 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 getting to be time. So once I get these girls finished up, I'm going to start on a new sculpt. A lot of people have been asking me what it's going to be. I have some ideas. I have some ideas, and hopefully you guys are going to appreciate them. Because uh, again, everything that I do is stuff that I want on my shelf, and every one of these is finished to that standard. So um, yeah, so that's what's that's what's up next. It's a blank slate, but uh, with what I think. It's going to be uh, a really interesting choice. I can't wait to see what you guys think. But anyway, here you go. Uh, we got Amy going down and uh, chilling over here behind the corner. Hope everybody has a good weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye.